the middle of the night violent home invasion with multiple armed assailants versus you in your pajamas. It's every parent's worst nightmare. We're breaking down one of these reactions right here. Hey guys, Aaron Dorr here with the American Firearms Association. You know, as society continues to devolve into lawlessness and anarchy in so many areas across the country, we're seeing a major uptick in the number of violent crimes, particularly when it comes to home invasions. A lot of us have thought about this for a long time. What would we do if this happened to us? And we're going to break down what one homeowner did in Kentucky when he was confronted by not one, not two, not three, but four violent and armed home invaders. We're going to discuss what we think he did right, what he could have done better. And as always, guys, our main point here is to get your opinion. What do you think he did right? What do you think he did wrong? What would you do if you were this guy in this middle of the night violent home invasion? As always, guys, subscribe for more content like this. And remember, we're not lawyers. We're giving you our take on what I would do if this happened to me. I'm going to play the video through one time at full speed. Then I'm going to stop. We're going to play it again going at one quarter speed to break down some of the details. Here we go. <clears throat> one attacker, two attackers, three attackers, one more in the doorway. Shots are being fired. They race outside. You never see them again. The homeowner comes in the doorway of the, uh, for a moment here in his bedroom. You see him briefly. He recedes back in the shadows, and that is the entire video. So I'm going to stop here again. I'm going to adjust the speed. We're going to play it again. And we're going to break this down from a tactical and legal perspective and the political per uh, perspective as well, because all these things come into play in this one short video. So to begin with, notice the door. It's being kicked uh, already right now. The room is shaking. The camera is shaking. The door pretty much immediately flies into the room. As part of your home defense process, we need to be considering the security of our external doors. Most external doors on regular homes will not survive more than a couple of kicks from a violent uh, home invader, especially if they're hopped up on some sort of combination of alcohol and narcotics. They simply will not withstand that kind of violent force. So as part of your overall target hardening process, it begins with the exterior lights, cameras, but also security doors make that part of your home defense strategy. Let's keep going. Notice the number of attackers. It is more and more common these days to have multiple attackers in armed robbery situations, in all kinds of violent crimes that includes in home invasions. Here we have one attacker right here. You can see he clearly has a handgun in his left hand. I think that's a revolver when I saw it more clearly earlier. Not 100% sure, but he certainly is armed as he makes his way into the home. Invader number two, pause it right there. You can see over here in the middle of the screen, he has a handgun visible up against the uh, door frame there. It shows up quite clearly. So the first two guys in the door are clearly armed. Let's keep on going. Number three comes into view here. You can also see a handgun in his hand. I'll pause it right there. Clearly in his right hand, there is a handgun unknown on make and model, but he has a handgun there as well. And now as I go to hit play, you're going to see uh, things happen on different parts of the screen. First, the homeowner will be engaging on the guy in red. But also in the doorway, if you look carefully, there is a fourth invader there. You see kind of the edge of his hat, or maybe it's his hood. He does not come into view. We do not see his hands. He may be armed. He may not be armed. Since three of his friends are, it stands to reason that he is as well. But so as part of your process on preparing to defend your home, no longer can we prepare for the sole home invader. It's very common now to have teams like this who are committing these violent crimes. So put that into your calculus when it comes to your home. Now let's watch the reaction from the homeowner. These guys lunge back, their shots being fired. You'll see muzzle flashes there, there, and there. The third one coming up, there it is again, out of the bedroom. Multiple shots are being fired. You see some debris from the sheetrock, probably dust from the sheetrock um, in the left side of the screen. And all four of these thugs race out of the home as fast as they could. So let's talk about some of the timing on this. Timing. So from the moment the door first blew open until this homeowner engaged the guy right about here was eight seconds, eight seconds. 
That's how fast this happens. So we have to be prepared for that in our in our personal space as well. If it happens to you, it's going to happen quickly in many situations. Let's discuss the round count here. As best we can determine, the homeowner shot eight times. There was nine shots audible, but the homeowner was shot once in the hand. It was a non-serious injury. Uh, he did not get seriously harmed in that from our knowledge. We believe the homeowner engaged eight times. And that brings into play a conversation around magazine limits. If you're in a blue state and you have to abide by a 10-round magazine limit, this guy is going to have two shots left in the gun, three if he had one in the chamber next to his bedside stand. So as you think about how you're going to defend your family and yourself in your home, having sufficient ammo, especially with multiple armed attackers, needs to be a part of that conversation. I also want to draw attention to the fact that this guy right here, this idiot, the thug in red, made a classic tactical error. We're very glad that he did. He paused in the fatal funnel. If you're a police officer or a soldier or know somebody who is, you may have heard that expression. The fatal funnel is this guy in the doorway being backlit by the living room, giving the homeowner in the, in, in the bedroom a perfect target uh, to engage with in a self-defense situation. So if the roles were reversed, you never want to be in that fatal funnel situation. If you have to go into a room, you must clear the doorway quickly. Thankfully, in this case, the thug could not do it. The homeowner was armed, and he had a great target uh, to engage with out of the shadows. He gets high marks uh, for that. The homeowner also gets high marks for me, frankly, just for staying in the shadows. When we hit play here, you can see this guy never becomes visible. And so he probably didn't have much for cover in his bedroom. So he used what he had, which was at least some concealment by being in the shadows. He did not race out to the danger. Now, sometimes you have no choice. If you have kids down the hall, if you have family, whatever, you have to defend your own. You're going to have to come out of that room and engage that threat directly if you have time to even react that quickly. But in this guy's case, he engaged from the shadows. He at least had the element of concealment because the thug, as far as we know, had no sort of a weapon light. And so he gets high marks for engaging from in the shadows. Let's keep going here. Let's keep watching this. As I said, you see the homeowner come into view very briefly here. Uh, momentarily, you'll see him right there in the doorway. Him or her, I believe this was the man in the, in the situation, and he never comes out of the room any closer. And I also give him high marks for that as well. There's two reasons why he should not leave that room at that moment and go outside and follow these bad guys. Number one, if he left the bedroom and got to the front door of his home, he would be in his own fatal funnel. He'd be backlit by his own light from the living room, and he'd be a perfect target for these thugs if they're waiting for him outside in an ambush. Of course, when they're outside, they could have actual cover, engine blocks, trees, things of that nature. And this homeowner would be a sitting duck in his own bed, in his own doorway, backlit by his own living room light. So for that reason, he should not try to go outside and engage. The second reason, though, is the legality of the issue. In every state in the country right now, I know it might sound bold, but in basically every state in, in America right now, including California, New York, and other blue states, this video will defend this guy in a court of law. Violent home invasion just before midnight, four attackers, at least three of whom were armed. He responded in his own bedroom against that attack. He's going to be okay in a court of law. I know you might not agree with me if you don't, comment in the comment section. Love to see what you think about that. But he's going to be protected. The moment he leaves his own home, though, to engage these guys again outside of his home, that changes everything from a legal perspective. In the house, he's protected legally. Outside of the house, he could be portrayed by a Soros liberal prosecutor as the guy who was now attacking the people who previously were attacking him. Obviously, it goes without saying, if these people had taken his spouse, if the thugs had taken his children, that's a whole different situation. You're going to have to engage no matter what in that situation. But if the threat has ended 
and they have left your property or at least left your the interior of your home, do not follow them outside for both safety reasons and legal reasons. Let's break down some of the politics of this, because the politicians all across the country would have you believe that no one needs to have more than 10 rounds of ammo. I don't know about you, but when I see this picture right here with four home invaders, because the fourth guy is visible right here in the doorframe, four home invaders, a 10 round magazine. If I'm in a blue state, I'm not feeling very comfortable about that. Not one little bit. More and more, we're seeing criminals that are using actual uh, bulletproof vests or they're using actual plates. The guy who at attacked the Buffalo, New York grocery store a year and a half ago had plates. These guys are not playing around. And so if you have a 10-round magazine in your handgun because some politicians say that's all you can have, that's a very dangerous situation. So as gun owners, we must always react politically to oppose any attempt to weaken our gun rights when it comes to how many rounds we can use for home defense. Let's discuss the uh, idea of safe storage laws. Again, you see the door open up eight seconds later, the guy's shooting a second and a half later. These guys are out of the house. The entire incident from door flying open shots being fired to the guys out of the home took around 10 seconds. And from the door flying open, the first shots being fired, just under eight. Despite that, a growing number of states have and many more want to enact what they call safe storage laws. Of course, there's nothing safe about these laws. These laws require you and I, law-abiding gun owners, to leave our firearms locked up 24 hours a day unless we are hunting, at the range, or cleaning our firearms. So they expect this homeowner in the course of those eight seconds to wake up, recognize a threat, find his glasses or contacts if he uses that kind of stuff, get to his firearm, open up the gun safe or unlock the cable lock, then find his ammo, make his weapon ready and still have time to engage. It's insulting. It's preposterous. As we all know, this guy would be dead he would be dead. These four guys break into his home. They don't care about the law. They're going to be inside and on top of him in a matter of seconds as he's trying to unlock his damn gun safe. He would be dead. So as any states around you or your state begins to try to enact a safe storage law, be very uh, on guard against that. Last main question I want to ask you what you think about is AR-15s for home defense. It's a hot topic. Some people love them. Some people don't because they're terrified about overpenetration. I have seven kids. I'm keenly aware of that risk myself. What are your thoughts on this? Because if a guy had an AR-15 right here, of course, he doesn't know how many assailants he has in his own home yet. But if he had an AR-15, he'd have 30 rounds to engage with. That'd be very comforting. He would have a great weapon light potentially on his rifle. That'd be very comforting. Yes, your handgun can have that, but it's a very nice way to have your, your fire, your rifle accessorized. Um, he'd have the potential uh, for other optics to make his acquisition even easier attacking these guys or counterattacking these guys. And in general, it is a preferred tool uh, to engage multiple armed assailants. And of course, there is ammo that is designed to minimize can never eliminate but minimize the threat of overpenetration. So what are your thoughts on that? I don't think the guy was right or wrong when it comes to the kind of firearm he chose in this situation. The good news for him is these guys all exited his, his uh, bedroom and ran out of the house. But what if they didn't? What if the guy in red came out of that room, turned the opposite direction and ran down the hallway? What if he had children down the hallway? At that point... No father, no mother can sit there in the shadows in their bedroom and hope for the best. We will have to engage. And at that point, I want a rifle in my hands, period. So for me, I'd want the rifle because I cannot contemplate all the different scenarios that are going to happen to me and my family. What are your thoughts when it comes to an AR-15 for home defense. And the outcome of this video is pretty straightforward. The homeowner in this case was shot in the hand. It was not a significant injury. All four criminals eventually 
were indicted. Now, this took several years from when this actually occurred until the indictment. And after they were indicted, there was a manhunt trying to bring all four of these guys into custody. These were violent, violent criminals uh, who apparently attacked this home for no obvious, no apparent reason. I know sometimes you wonder, was this some drug deal gone bad or is it another criminal they were attacking because they were angry about some rip on the street? In this situation, as far as we know, there was no known, no obvious motive for this home invasion. And frankly, that's the scariest kind for me because that's not a thing we can ever guard against. We could never see it coming. Guys, that's my take on this self-defense shooting. As always, give us your comments in the comment section. Subscribe to our channel for more content. And join the fight for freedom today at joinafa.org.